What's going on, guys? Welcome to another... I know it's another one. Just calm down. It's fine. It'll be all good. I promise. All right? We're on the weekly, as you know. So just if you, don't worry about it. It's a good guest this week as well. Jamie, um, I believe this right here is the 87th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast. Oh, yeah, it is. Wonderful. And I do believe if I just... Look, just give me a second. Just give me a second. Um, it's the Chronicles of, uh, of Norm McNeil 2. Yeah, it is. Number two, baby. He's back. Beautiful. Hit it. Hey, honey bunny. It's Rivka Reyes. This is Ron Wasserman, the nut that wrote Go Go Power Rangers. It's Boba Fett here. This is Molly Rennick from Living Dead Girl. It's WWE superstar legend, Davy Boy Smith's daughter, Georgia Smith. Hi there. You're about to enjoy the chronicles of Tom and Jamie with special guest, Noah McNeil. Wherever that is. Anyway... Enjoy. Oh, and by the way, you are smelling really good today. Like, I found myself when I was reading, like, I couldn't put it down. Boys and girls, join us as we bring you the Chronicles of Noel McNeil 2. <laughs> One oh. way to end, and what a way to bring in that piece of resistance. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Chronicles of Noel McNeil 2. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the big blue house. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the big blue house. Door is open. Come on in. Noel McNeil is, returns to us again. Again, we are so glad to have Noel on the show again. This man is absolutely amazing. For those unaware, he is a puppeteering legend. He has worked on Sesame Street for over 30 years. He's currently working off Broadway and Little Shop of Horrors. But ladies and gentlemen, we mostly know this man for playing that legend that is Bear in the Big Blue House. He is joining us again to talk all about his brand new book, his memoirs. Hey, this was really fun. And so much more. My God, this was amazing. Yeah, this is uh, this is a great conversation. Noel, obviously, like Jamie just said, is back to discuss all about Bear Bibbly House now being on Disney+. Plus. Talk about um, his role as Audrey and all of the plants in uh, Little Shop of Horrors on Broadway. And of course, his book, his brand new book. Hey, this is really fun. His memoirs, which are a fantastic read, by the way, and get... Excuse me, sorry, get on Amazon right now while uh, while we're talking about this. And of course, he's now directing Sesame Street after all that time working on set. It's incredible. And it's just a really great conversation. Um, and there are some Susan McNeil little plugs in there for his wife's books as well. So, um, you know, so I had to get involved. I had to get involved making that little reel earlier earlier today on, on Monday. It's because on Friday. So, um, but guys, you're going to really enjoy this. It's uh, it's one hell of a of an interview. Um, and Noel is just gracious and wonderful as always. Jenny! Yes, sir. Do you happen to have any final words at all? Just a massive thank you to Noel for coming and joining us again and sitting down. And as you saw at the start of this episode, boys and girls, this episode was brought to you. It was opened and introduced by Bear himself. God, I love this one. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, interviewing this week, he's back. It's No McNeil. I guess. Look who it is. <laughs> How are you, Nolly? You well? I'm good. How are you guys? Tired, yeah. but other than that, good. <laughs> <laughs> And that was Monday. Yeah, I think I think if you look at the word "tired" in a dictionary, you'll probably see my face today. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's first day of a new month. It can't be that bad. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Come on, James. Just, just a very busy, <laughs> very busy weekend. The night shifts and blah. Yeah. Just... <laughs> well, okay, thanks for having me back, guys. Ah, oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, I mean, obviously, when I saw you back in February. Um, that we it had to be done. It had to be done. So obviously, with how much you've done the last couple of years, it's like, yeah, we need to have Noel back. Plus, we've upgraded since we last spoke to you. We we actually have sponsors and stuff now, and things going on. So yeah, um, so, you know, name, it's, uh, 
It just Congrats. made sense. It just made yeah. sense. All right. So it'd be good to catch and up. I got this thing to plug, so there you go. <laughs> oh, this thing you mean? Uh... Oh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder what that was. It's been there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it could be like a trick, just like pass it down to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, well, well, obviously, you know how this goes. Uh, Jamie's just going to do a nice introduction just to lead, bring everybody in, and then we're just going to bombard you, you know, with questions. How does that sound? Great, because I can blather like nobody's business, so go for it. <laughs> yes, that's what we like. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Let me do my little introduction then. Ladies and gentlemen, today we bring you a returning guest who we originally spoke to way back in June 2021. Today's guest has spent a life and career bringing smiles to the face of people, both young and old, with legendary performances on Sesame Street last week tonight, and most famously as a particular bear who lives in a big blue house. Here to talk all about his new book, Hey, This Was Really Fun, possibly the nicest person on planet Earth. <laughs> Boys and girls, join us as we bring you the chronicles of Noel McNeil 2. <laughs> That was a wonderful introduction. And if I'm the nicest person you've met, you need to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> you're bare. As far as I'm concerned, no one can ever top being the nicest person you've met. the nicest you're person you've met. <laughs> <laughs> I better scratch out the, the last few of my questions. Hey, exactly. so. like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. Uh, bear with. Uh, oh, uh, hey. Uh, hey. Uh, <laughs> more of that coming, uh, kids. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, brought to you by Stay Cozy. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, we spoke to you back in June of 2021. I, I couldn't believe I couldn't myself believe it was that long ago. Two actually. years, it's June crazy. of 2021. Wow, yeah, June specifically June 19th. I went back in our calendar and had a look. Um, wow, crazy, absolutely crazy. But how just on a generic spectrum, like how have the last few years been for you? Um, well, good. This, first of all, this whole thing of a pandemic seems to be over. So that was kind of nice. So, um, and then just been uh, busy with, uh, like, uh, with Sesame Street. I'm now a, uh, director for the show. So that's been fun. It's been great. Uh, actually working with, um, uh, one of the characters, there was one segment that I'm, I'm, I'm a director for, and it's called, uh, Monster Foodie Trucks. And it's with Cookie Monster and Gunger. And Cookie Monster is played by Dave Rudman, and Gonger is played by uh, Warwick, who I don't know if you know, but uh, Warwick is this great puppeteer who's like been on the Dark Crystal, and he has his own Scottish show, maybe even Mo, and he's also one of the mongrels of uh, Dodge, and and so he's he's, he's hmm. great. He's this great puppeteer. He's like awesome. So Warwick Davis, he's like so funny and so clever, and he and Dave have uh, this great chemistry as uh, Gonger and. Uh, as Cookie Monster. So I've been doing that. And then lately I've also been uh, the swing puppeteer for the off-Broadway production of Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. So every now and then I get to be a man-eating plant, which I'm actually doing this weekend, like five straight shows, because uh, one of the main puppeteers is away. So I'm doing coverage for uh, Friday and both matinee on Saturday and Sunday and evening Saturday and Sunday. So quite the workout coming up <laughs> it's incredible absolutely incredible <laughs> um i just want to wish a massive congratulations to you son matt for getting into boston conservatory at berkeley that is incredible news absolutely amazing yeah. what's he studying he's studying a uh, vocal performance oh wow yeah so is... i'm sure it's like a lot of classical training but that can easily be adapted for musical theater which he's also interested in because he's done his school has done um two productions on in the since since they've been back. Uh last year when he was a junior, they did Rent, the musical. And not Rent Junior, where it gets kind of edited and you know Angel has a cold or anything. It's like it's like the full blown <laughs> version of it with everything. And I mean everything. And so then this year they did Carrie the musical. <laughs> and yes. Take a Stephen moment to absorb King's that for Carrie, a second. Yeah? Just, yeah. just carry, the, carry the music. How can you make wow. that a musical? <laughs> ah, there's this great podcast. Speaking of podcasts, it's cross promote. It's called Out for Blood, and it's by two 
of your countrymen, two, two Brits, who are obsessed with the history of Carrie the Musical that started at Stratford-on-Avon. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I'll let you go from there. Just like go to, it's like, you know, Out for Blood, the history of Carrie the Musical. It's like eight installments and not boring at all. It is an amazing story. It is like the, it, it's just like everything that was supposed to go right and just went wrong <laughs> with this musical. <laughs> but they revived it a couple of years ago and re, it was revived a couple of years ago and was retweaked. So now a lot of high schools do it because of the focus on uh, bullying and abuse. And so it does it. But as my son said, you know, the, the music's great. The script sucks because it was written by people who think this is what high schoolers talk like. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah OK. I, I just yes. can't work out how you make songs out of that story. Like... <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find this now. That's amazing. Oh, yes. yeah, absolutely. You got you, you got to listen to this. I mean, a couple of the songs are actually quite beautiful and, and haunting, but it's just like, yeah. I mean, it's not as bad as, I mean, here in New York, there was there was this thing um, years ago, a development, it, it used to develop musicals. It was called, um, um, I forgot what it was called just now, but it was uh, a, a place that would develop musicals and would stage them either like with readings or full-blown productions to help get interest in having them move forward and so there was one musical musical uh, musical theater works that's what it was called and there was one musical my friend had was a member of this and he took me to it and it was a production and it was called cradle song and it was a musical about crib death what the <laughs> <laughs> what the mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> When you yes. talk to Bear, you sense yourself, boys and girls. No. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my but days. You start out with this, like, very yuppie couple who are so absorbed with their careers and advancing. And then they discover that they're going to have a baby. And it just throws their whole lives into a loop. And then by the end of Act One, they've actually accepted the fact that this is what life is meant to be. This is what it's all about. This is what our lives were meant to have one more person to shift the focus from from us to all of us and they like they sing like a little song about that and as they walk off they, and they're in front of the bassinet looking at the bassinet and as they walk off the lights dim except for this one shaft of light that glows on to the bassinet and then intermission <laughs> and oh we come my back day. and we come back six months later and well yeah so anyway, that was fun. Um, it's it's not very often I'm rendered completely speechless, but I have literally no <laughs> idea what to say. <laughs> what the... There you go. Wow. That's what you thought. I psycho barber, please. <laughs> I see your psycho barber, and I raise you. <laughs> raise you, a telekinetic teenager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know how to go on. Follow up from that. I'm a bit like. What, See, it I, starts out as a compliment towards my son and ends up with this sort of weird, <laughs> <laughs> left field kind of like what? What is going on in yeah. theater? Yes. yes. No, no, where are you taking us? Where are we going? What's, <laughs> what's down this road? Why is it getting so what's dark? Going on? <laughs> what's happening? Yes. So yeah. So anyway, he's he. Oh, and so so the director of of of. of the high school he picked like rent and then he also picked carrie so at the end of the last show they always announce next year's uh, musical which my son's going to come back to and watch and so having done rent having done carrie next year's musical is titanic It could have been worse. It could have been. It could have been top death. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that Titanic the musical is playing in the city I live in Birmingham, and I'm like, I love the movie Titanic. I've always been loved the story, but I can't imagine that as a musical again. Just it sounds so weird to me. Yeah, exactly, and then and then also, and I mean, it was staged on on Broadway and all that, and you know, aside from like the music you know in terms of like you know sets and aesthetics you know 
it does have to at some point start to tilt because that's yeah. what's happening to the ship. So as well as the fact that you go from rent where like, you know, Angel dies, that's one person. Then you go to Carrie and about like, you know, 40 people die because, you know, that's what happens when you go to prom. <laughs> now you've gone to Titanic. And so a couple of us were actually wondering, like, is 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 he okay? Is is the director going through some sort of like depression? Is he is he living out some sort of therapy that we're not aware of? Every year the death toll just gets higher. <laughs> just just so every year. Exactly. I was going to say, the, yeah. ne the next one's probably like Armageddon, but the meteor yeah, exactly. actually hits the earth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, everyone dies. Yeah. <laughs> the entire it. universe Existence dies. is gone, yeah. Exactly. So it's just like, wow. So yeah, so he's, uh, so despite that, my son is <laughs> interested in musical theater. <laughs> and uh, he's really good. I'm, I'm very proud to, to say that he's very good. Also, very proud. I mean, he, um, I'm also proud of the fact that he did this whole application process himself. Like he applied to these schools. He did all the deadlines. He did all the the essays. And my wife, who is an author, Susan Ely McNeil, author of the Maggie Hope Mysteries. And there you go, available on Amazon. Um, but he did this all himself. We didn't have to like badger him once. We didn't like to look over his shoulder. We didn't have to pay people off like you know, <laughs> like, you know, all those people in Hollywood did. <laughs> like he did this all himself. So, and um, and Boko was like the like the first choice, and he got in. So, huzzah! That's and incredible. also selfishly, it's like we 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 said to him we would support anywhere because he actually auditioned for a couple of places in the UK, and uh, we said we will support. Excuse me, we will support wherever you go. But when he was favoring Boko. Boston Conservatory, we were like, yes, that's only three hours away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we'll let you fly yeah. the nest, but not that far. far. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a little tether, just like, yep. Nope. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm here. <laughs> that's amazing. But yeah, so, so we've been so we so we've been busy like like celebrating that, as well as the fact that this is now a huge life change for all of us and we've talked about it how you know we're so proud of him and uh the fact that this is a new chapter and a new adventure but we're also acknowledging the fact that it's also an ending it's like mm. it's the ending of his childhood and how he is now stepping into adult he's 18 now so that's adulthood part one and so he's well aware of that too and realizing like oh bollocks it's like i really gotta like my act together said so, yeah like doing your own laundry now <laughs> just boots him out of the door goodbye goodbye <laughs> <laughs> throwing the stuff into the car hey now this is really it's time fun. to go <laughs> <laughs> you know, on tiktok there was like there was this girl who posted there was like there was a trend on tiktok last year where taking songs out of context like in, inappropriately and this one, one guy she had had spent an evening with him and so the next morning as he was leaving he puts on his iphone and it starts playing the goodbye song as he's <laughs> leaving <laughs> and it's like this is that's like wow <laughs> that's amazing Still touches so many people in so many ways. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, but obviously, you mentioned before I was going to bring it up. You've been working off Broadway in Little Shop of Horrors, right. like playing Audrey too. That is absolutely incredible. And I saw that, I was like, oh, that is just awesome. Is this the first time you've done off Broadway puppeteering or on stage, or is this something you've done before? Yeah, I've done. Yeah, this is like the first. I mean, it was like the first. This is the first legitimate theater I've I've done. I mean, I've done theater where I've produced shows for the Bronx Zoo, uh, which is theater, but it's like you know, with like you know, the smell of giraffe dung in the background, but it's still theater. But this is like legit, like off Broadway, which I've never done before. And being in the world of like theater is so different because I've only been in the world of television. And like, you know, the occasional movie and commercial, but never 
theater. And so there's always like the Tony Awards, there's always throughout the show, they mention the word community until it becomes like a drinking game after a while. It's like the community, we have the community, this great community, this theatrical community, the Broadway community, it's, it's just <laughs> on and on and on. And it's like, well, it's true. I finally realized it's true because um, the, the cast, the staff, the crew of Little Shop, they are the nicest people and they know each other. They know each other from like other shows and other productions like off-Broadway, Broadway, national tours. It's unbelievable, which is why kids, if you get to do theater, make sure you're a team player because reputations last and it will follow you. <laughs> because one of the actors uh, said that he was in a production that was on Broadway. And then when a, uh, a new production was being considered somewhere. Uh, people in the room, they, you know, producers, directors, like they go through and they think of names. And this person's name came up, and one of the people in the room said, "Oh no, 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 no! You don't want that person." Mm -hmm. And it was like, "Why?" And then started to tell all the things that this person had done in this production. So, again, <laughs> make sure you're a team player. <laughs> Ooh, what, um, exactly. <laughs> what made you want to dip your toe into the world of theatre? Because you've done TV for so long now. What made you go, actually, I want to get on Broadway for a little bit and try this out? It was funny. I actually took my son to see a uh, little shop in February of 2020. And I was watching it and thought, like, well, this was a great production. I know the guys who made the, the plants, uh, Monkey Boys production. And it was great. And I thought, it was like, hmm, I was like, that would kind of be fun to do. I could do this. Hmm. And that was it. This is like, never thought about it. <laughs> and then last fall, Mark Petrosino of Monkey Boys called me and said, no, they're looking for a new vacation swing for Little Shop. Would you be interested? And I was like, oh, let's see. Puppet's big. It's cumbersome. It's sweaty. It's heavy as heck. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Right up my alley. <laughs> exactly. Right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then I, I uh, started re rehearsing and it was funny. Like I, I, I rehearsed and then like on my very first day of rehearsal, they were like, I know we'd like you to uh, go on uh, next week. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> like I haven't, I haven't even touched a plant yet. And you're already saying you're scheduled for next week. I was like, Okay. <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean, in a way, it's like that your um, your your career procedure basically. They all go, well, he's been in puppetry for forty odd years, so it's almost mm -hmm. like they go, he, he clearly knows what he's doing, right? Well, how can difficult it be to control Audrey too, a massive man eating plant? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like here's the thing about theater, though. It's like unlike TV, you know, like TV, you like you know, you, you walk through it, you rehearse it one or two times, you do a take. Maybe you do one more and then that's it. With theater, there's always notes. Always <laughs> notes. No matter how many times you do this, <laughs> there will always be a note. <laughs> Even if the notes conflict with the previous note, there will <laughs> always be a note. If you could just move that left leaf just slightly to the right, that'd be perfect. Exactly. So it was just like, perfect. Just, just like a half second, like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what you're looking at? <laughs> Drag them out so, into the audience. Uh, Tell me one person in the audience that would have noticed that. <laughs> Tell me one person. <laughs> <laughs> Who would notice it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's often like on, you know, on Sesame, they'll, they'll bring up a point that's so like, mood and I'll, I would just remind them you realize our core audience smacks themselves in the face when they wave bye bye so I think we can get away with this oh. I love the idea of something like the mouth needs to be open at 55 degrees you open it at 37 okay it needs to be a bit <laughs> exactly. wider and they're there with like the protractors to flex measure and a bit wider no a bit wider but there we go perfect yeah. excellent and then next week it's like you it see, needs to be 38 degrees not 55 all right, you think that's a joke? Oh no, that's very close to what one of the notes was. No, in terms of like having the plant smile. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Just like this yeah. Is 
It's insane. <laughs> it's insane. Uh -huh. it's insane. But yeah. yeah, but 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 I love it. And what's great is because there's there's four what's plants or as they're called pods. So pod one is the little one that gets placed on the counter that comes to mm. life for the first time. Pod two is the one Seymour, the actor, actually holds, and it's a fake arm, so he has his arm inside, and he's manipulating it. But then there's pod three that does the song, Get It, which is Feed Me. And then there's uh, the last one, pod four, which is the ginormous one that pretty much like eats half the cast. And with that one, which what's great is, that's the one that at the very end of it, there's a monitor. So you can see what the audience is seeing. So you can see on stage. So suddenly now, it's like I'm back in my comfort zone where I actually have a monitor where I can actually puppeteer instead of imagining what it looks like. And it's great. So as big, as cumbersome as it is, my favorite pod is pod four. <laughs> oh, I was there all over again. <laughs> I was, <laughs> was going to say, is the actual puppeteering itself work on stage different to how it is on TV? Was it pretty much just the same thing? I was like, it's 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 different. Well, with, with TV, it's more like nuanced because it's TV is very uh, personal. It's like you're looking at this particular thing, but with theater, you're playing to like a house. So you really are playing to the cheap seats in the back. So you can't be too subtle. Otherwise it won't, it won't read. Mm. So you can do, you can do something and just make sure that they understand what, what's happening. So, but yeah, you have to kind of like finesse it a little bit. And, and like I said before, like imagining what it looks like to the, to the people out there. So, which is why doing um, rehearsals, I've actually recorded like me doing the plan and then me and the head puppeteer, Teddy would go over it. And so this way I can see what it looks like to the audience. So, yeah. What is a, what exactly is a vacation swing? You mentioned at the start that that's literally what you're there to do. So what exactly is that? <clears throat> yeah, this is also part of like the whole world of theater that I've been <laughs> learning. There's like, there's like the, the stars and then there's understudies and understudies are the people who understudy like, you know, a main character or two. <laughs> and then there is the like swings mm -hmm. like me who actually we're not an understudy for like everybody. We're a swing for like a specific like role. So in my okay. case, I'm the swing for well, for puppetry, coming in and doing it when either Teddy or Weston Long aren't uh, available. So I will come in and I would I will do that. And currently, it's me and another puppeteer, Jonathan Lyons. We are the vacation swing. And back in January, um, here here in New York, we were ravaged between COVID and the flu, and so there was this like two weeks where it was like almost everybody was out. <laughs> And so oh. I was on John Hosh, who was the other puppeteer. He was on uh, Aaron, the voice of the plant. He was out. And so Major was on. Uh, two of the urchins were out. So two of the urchins were on. And so Audrey was out. So then the understudy for Audrey was on. And so it was just down to like Matt Doyle, who's the current Seymour, and Brad Oscar, who is uh, Mushnick. And then we were just like, guys, you have got to stay healthy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, you've got to stay healthy. <laughs> when you're not on stage, we're going to wrap you in bubble wrap and stay in that exactly. room. Don't go to exactly. anyone. <laughs> right. You're not going to, not going anywhere. Also the fact that being in theater, you, you don't, this, which was really great because I started rehearsing with Matt Doyle, who was taking over for Rob McClure because Rob McClure was uh, the Seymour before he left. And, Ron McClure is like this accomplished actor and was like, you know, Tony nominated. And Matt Doyle is a Tony winner. And I mean, come from the company and like this extensive career. And it's like, these guys do not have egos because there's only one male dressing room. Like, that's it. Where seven guys share this one small room. <laughs> And it's very similar to the women. There's like this one small room. So you don't have time for egos and prima donnas. So, which is 
also part of how nice these these people are. It's like I I love these people. They're they're so cool and so talented, so ridiculously talented. So I suppose it goes back to that family thing you were saying before. Mm-hmm. It's a say it with me community it's community. It's a... I said the wrong one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> community. I mean, I know you said you got a call from somebody, but with roles like this in theatre, did you still have to audition for the ones that people just call you up and go, "I know exactly who'd be perfect for this role"? Oh, that's what happened with with this with Little Shop because Monkey Boy they've known me for they've known me for years, and so in fact. Uh, Mike Latini, who is Mark's partner, he was a uh, bear puppeteer for the live show that would tour. So, oh wow, they know me for a while. So yeah, so this it really, really was one of those cases where uh, the production asked, "Do you know anybody?" And they're like, "Oh, maybe no one would like to do it." So That's yeah, cool. so this was one of the cases. In other cases, you do have to audition. I'm sure if somehow I wasn't getting it, I'm sure they would like say thank you so much but but luckily it it, it did work out so I suppose for you it's nice to have like new challenges but you've been saying you've been doing this for years have like a new challenge doing something different I suppose it's quite nice for yourself as well oh yeah that keeps it yeah in my you know incredibly limited wheelhouse of expertise like this is right up my alley which is <laughs> which is great so and you know it's also nice being you know I'm on contract shop so as a vacation swing you know i get paid whether they use me or not so nice. that's oh. really nice too <laughs> spectacular like. would, exactly. you, would uh-huh. you would you want to do more would you want to do more productions of anything else i don't know i'm trying i was racking my brain really quickly to find if there's any more puppets in any more broadway shows but i can't I know, think of any more puppets in yeah puppets in broadway you think well here's the thing with with puppetry and, and broadway um, the fact that we're able to do it is because, you know, we're puppeteers, but there have been other puppet instances where the puppeteer has not been allowed to do it. But, uh, years ago, there was Shrek the Musical, and um, there was the part where the magic mirror, like, talks to um, um, Lord Farquaad. And so it was this ginormous mirror that came down, and it was this face inside that would uh, be um, radio controlled by John Tataglia, uh, who is an amazing puppeteer. He was the original uh, Princeton Avenue Q. He's in Fraggle Rock. He's a director of theater oh, wow. at the Mooney here in the U.S. And so he would um, um, manipulate the you know the face. But there's a union here called IATSE, which is kind of like the mafia of Broadway, where it's like. If they deem something a prop, it's their jurisdiction. So the fact that this mirror came down, this they said it was a piece of scenery. It was like a ginormous prop. And so it was under their jurisdiction. And so they had one of their guys manipulate the face and the mouth. And Johnny was then only allowed to do the voice. And they took this for like, you know, to try and fight it. And like, nope, they lost because of the fact that this was considered a prop. Now, how come we can do the puppets for Little Shop? It's because of the fact that we, quote unquote, wear them. They're on our actual body. Like pod Mm. one is like on my arm. Pod three, I'm actually inside and pod four too. So I'm sort of wearing it. And because I'm wearing it, it's considered like a costume, which an actor would wear. And so uh, that's why we're allowed to do it. That's crazy. It's very man. similar yeah. to like Wicked on Broadway. It's a it's a it's the giant head of the wizard, but a puppeteer doesn't do it. The actor doesn't do it. It's a prop person does it. That's that's it's, mad. It's, yeah, it's almost like it's just really, being really fin- that's finicky. So big. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh. just moving on slightly like like I said so much has happened since we last spoke to you uh, and you mentioned at the beginning you are now uh, you've been with Sesame Street for 40, 40 seasons and you're now directing 
uh, directing the series and uh, the social impact projects, which is incredible. How did that actually, because obviously you were a wrangler when you first started and now, yeah. and now you're here directing, like that must be mental. How did that actually happen? Oh yeah, it's beyond mental. Like the, the first day of this past season, um, as a director, they, they sent a car for me to oh, take me what? to the studio. Oh. So it's like, yes, exactly. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, nonprofit. And so they, they sent me to the studio. And so my son's high school is across the street from the studio. So I said, it's like, you want a lift? <laughs> and he was like, sure. So I gave him a lift to the studio. And it happened to be his birthday too. So I gave him a lift. And so we get out and I hug him. And then we just pretty much walk in opposite directions. He walks across the street and I just walk inside. And so I was, as I was walking inside, I was thinking like, if you told, you know, 21 year old, no, 40 something years ago that you'd be getting out of a car to direct Sesame after dropping off your teenage son across <laughs> the street. <laughs> now that's mental. <laughs> it's like, but yeah, it's, yeah, we from wrangling to background puppetry to being a consultant for the, uh, the international production of Sesame game travel to the other countries. So now I'm a, I'm a director for the show, which is awesome. And it's really, it's really fun. That's the other thing I've been having, like the first time I uh, came home after the Monster Foodie segment, my wife said, uh, how was it? It's like, it was great. It's like, professionally, this is the most fun I've had in years. And it was awesome because of the fact that, especially with a show like Sesame, I know how it works, having been there for quite some time. And so from a puppetry standpoint from a assisting the puppeteer standpoint from the wrangling standpoint as well as well as from the directing standpoint because i've worked with some amazing directors on sesame and some not so amazing directors. <laughs> <laughs> so i know exactly what to do and definitely what not to do i suppose as well you're going to have like the best rapport with the cast and the crew and everyone work because you've known them for so many years well yeah i mean it's like a lot of like i like a lot of them have like, you know, come and gone, but uh, there's uh, there's actually, we were talking about recently, there's only a handful of us left who actually worked with Jim Henson. Mm. And it's like, it's me, Pam Marciero, Marty Robinson, who by the way, originated the plants of Little Shop of Forest. Uh, when I started in 1982, Marty started um, doing Little Shop of Horrors at night. And so wow. he would do Sesame Street in the daytime. And then he would go and do Little Shop at Night. And it was him and uh, puppeteer Lynn Hipp Hippen doing the, the plants. And so the majority was pretty much like Marty and, and Lynn would assist. And so when Marty wasn't like, you know, doing something on the show on Sesame, he'd be in his dressing room just asleep, just out. <laughs> and then come six o'clock, head downtown, and, and do little shops so for like that year he was exhausted and jacked like you wouldn't believe <laughs> he told That's me like, yeah like that show it. wrecked my body <laughs> <laughs> so, are you still performing on the show as well as directing or are you just solely oh, yeah. directing oh yeah every now every now and then i do get to uh perform i mean granted now it's like if you look at the end credits we have like you know two major league baseball teams of puppeteers. That's how many there are now. But occasionally I do get to like to, to, to puppeteer. Like this past uh, couple of weeks ago when I was directing the social, social impact uh, project, there were a couple of videos we were doing in one day. And one day had these characters with a, a teacher. And so Matt Vogel, who's a uh, puppet captain for the show, as well as Big Bird in the Count and a really good friend, he said, no, would you mind Doing the teacher, it's like, sure, I don't mind. That'd be fun. And another paycheck. Cha ching. So <laughs> exactly. As long as the cash is in, sure, I'll do it. Okay. Have my character say you... cut at the end of his line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon is um contribute to the success of Sesame Street for the fact that it's been going for so long and it's still going strong now? Oh yeah. With currently airing uh, season 53 we just wrapped season 54 and they've already started work on the curriculum and scripts for season 55 which will start later this year 
And so it's it says to me it was this there's this great documentary called it's based on the book. It's called Street Gang. Uh, the story of Sesame Street, how, how, how we got to Sesame Street. And it was a book uh, by Michael Davis, and, and now it's a, a documentary. And here it's seen on like uh, HBO Max. And it's great. And it just still tells the story about how this show uh, started. And it's, it's one of those shows where you just won't ever see this kind of show again. Certainly not longevity. There will never be a kid show that will be going on for 55 no. years. <laughs> um, but the fact this was a very special show that had never been done before. And I, I remember the when I was a kid, there was a sh on a Sunday night, there was a half hour show hosted by these two puppets, one who had the head of a football, the other kind of like a head of a banana, named Ernie and Bert. And they talked about this brand new show coming on tomorrow morning. And they showed scenes from it. And what was great um, back then for me was that I, I live in New York and I grew up in central Harlem. So Sesame Street looked like where I grew up. And so mm -hmm. it just had that great appeal of being able to walk out. And, you know, it wouldn't be surprising, like at the trash can, to have Oscar pop up or have, you know, the empty lot like down the street have like, you know, big birds nest there. Because it looked like what you would you would see it. And because of the... the um, because of that, the characters also popped a lot more. You can they weren't lost in the in the background. So and then they were just teaching kids to be originally, you know, ready for um preschool. And it they still we still do that, but we also um touch into like, you know, uh social issues over the years that have uh that have been necessary because uh the world that kids are growing up in just seems to get more and more complicated each and every day. And so, yeah, we're still teaching the number three and, you know, B is for bowl, but yeah, also going through about sharing and cooperation and characters like Julia, who makes you aware that this is someone that has something in, um, about them called autism and it's okay. Yes. It's like, this is how she behaves. And if you know somebody, then this is what you can expect, but you can still have fun with them just in, you know, a way that will help them have fun. And in other ways, I'm just introducing uh, characters like Tamir and, uh, and Gabby who are black. They're black puppets. They're African-Americans, African-American puppets. And they're, they're great. <clears throat> they're awesome. I directed... Uh, last year, there was a social impact project. It was uh, with Wes and Elijah, who are two African-American puppets, a father and a son. Elijah's the dad, Wes is the son. And there was this whole segment that the puppeteers came up with that takes place in a barbershop. And you can see it on YouTube, Sesame Barbershop. And it's great. It was like, they were there and we auditioned uh, an actor who, who, was, who was black and he was the barber. And we had another black Muppet and Roscoe Orman, who was Gordon, he's in it too. And a friend of mine who's, who's black told me, no, this was fantastic. Sesame hasn't been this black since 1974. And so <laughs> he loved it. People just like, people like really, really love it. It resonated so well. In fact, <clears throat> in order to get the look of the barbershop, uh, we were going back and forth about it. And, suggesting that maybe there'd be like um, photos in the back of like people from the past. And so I took like two of my ancestors and like posted it like with a little Photoshop. So you mean, you mean something like this? And it was like, yeah. And it's like, could we use those photos? I was like, oh, sure. <laughs> so my, awesome. so my, my, yeah. So my, uh, my great grandfather and great, great grandmother are, on this wall <laughs> with Gordon sitting in front. <laughs> That's awesome though. Yeah, so I mean, like one I... of those things where my ancestors would never have believed this. Like after, like in 2018, when we did um, the Muppets at the O2 and we all scattered to the four corners of Europe and my wife and son and I went to uh, to Erisag, Scotland. And I was standing outside of uh, the, the beautiful land looking at you know the landscape. And I was just thinking like, there is no way that my ancestor who emigrated from Scotland would have guessed that his direct descendant would be brought back 
because of a pig and a frog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey. I mean, <laughs> the fact that obviously you're addressing real world issues and things that are going on, and like you say, like kids' lives. I mean, I would hate to be a child now, like with all the technology and everything going on. And it's just, there's so much, I wouldn't say pain in the world, but there's just, uh, life just seems to be a lot crazier than you know, I remember it being. Um, and the fact that Sesame reaches out and addresses those issues, I was, we will get to it. Funny enough, I was reading your book, Noel. Um, and uh, there was a, a story you wrote in there about um, is it your uh, Will Lee who played Mister Mister Booper Hooper Mister Hooper, Mister Hooper. Was it? yeah yeah right. yeah sorry well, that was a really good Big Bird reference because he also yes. gets the name wrong all the time so that's great <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you picked up on that <laughs> five points um, Gryffindor yeah <laughs> Woo! Uh, um, and obviously sadly he passed away uh, and yeah. he was like a quite a big mainstay character. And instead of going like, you know, when it was like, oh, what are we going to do with this? The fact that you addressed the fact that he'd, you know, he'd passed on and everything and it got recognized all over the world near enough, I think is absolutely amazing. And that's why I think Cement Sesame Street is such a massive show because you address real world issues. You don't ignore, you know, it's not like, oh, they're kids. We can't talk about this. It's the fact that you go, well, this has happened, but let's find a way we can talk about it in a way that they're going to understand that we're not there going, you know, um, it's not too over the top i suppose i couldn't think of yeah. a good analogy for it but yeah the fact that you're addressing these yeah. issues i think is absolutely superb oh yeah i mean they took the they took the time between seasons to figure out like what to do about mr hooper and then they decided like what if we actually explain that he died which is very respectful towards the audience and also respectful to the memory of will lee rather than say mr hooper moved away or to recast him um and so, again, it's like, and that had never, ever been done on a children's show before. And so they they did this. And people talk about, like, the segment where Big Bird finds out or is reminded that he got, died and what that means. But before that, there's this other segment that happens where Gordon's standing and he's reading a newspaper. And Big Bird suddenly walks by him backwards with his head between his legs. And Gordon says, Big Bird, what are you doing? He said, I'm walking down the street with my head between my legs. It's like, why? Because, just because, yeah, just because. And he's like, you wanna join me? And so Big, so Gordon puts it down and like he, they both go walking out of frame with their head between the legs and all that. <laughs> so then other things happen, you know, and then that's when the scene comes where Big Bird has all these pictures with all of his friends that he gives to everybody in the arbor. And the last one is of Mr. Hooper. And can't wait to give it to him. And they say, Big Bird, don't you remember? He died. He's dead. And Big Bird's like, oh, right. Yeah, you did tell me that. Oh, well, I'll just wait till he gets back. And that's when Susan says, Big Bird, when someone dies, they don't come back. And he says, ever? He's like, ever. And he gets very upset. And so it's like, it's not, it's not fair. Why do people have to die? And then Gordon says, Big Bird, people die because. Just because? just because and like and he says like oh i'll miss you mr looper like it's super big bird and then <laughs> and then it it goes to something else and then for the very end of the show that's when a neighbor who we've never seen before but comes home from the hospital with their brand new baby so it kind of has that nice little circle of life mm. uh, moment where like life goes on but again it's like one of those things where it's like sesame had no show had ever done it. And Sesame was just like, yeah, let's do it. Let's try this. So, and really, really carefully worked it out so that the basic of death means that when someone dies, they don't come back. Something that, you know, a child could really understand. Yeah. And obviously just yeah. massive respect to, to Mr. Lee as well, who sadly passed oh, yeah. on. So yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He was like incredibly, he was like, the Muppets and Mr. Hooper were so recognizable because also the fact that Will Lee, he was an older man. He was a genuinely older man. He wasn't in makeup. He was an older man. And again, you, you didn't find that a lot on kids shows. It was always like, you know, fairly younger people. I mean, we had Captain Kangaroo, but for many years, Bob Keeshan would just like put a mustache on until he just started aging into the character. 
but will we we <laughs> genuinely an, an old no it's, it's true <laughs> like, i heard him say like at so one point he didn't have to put on makeup anymore he just looked like that <laughs> <laughs> But Will Lee was a generally older man. And that also was great to show like um, generations for kids. Mm. And uh, there, there was, uh, for this memorial, there was a segment that Will Lee did as Mr. Hooper talking about when he was little and showing this, his family album of how he would help out his his dad at the, the store. And now like he owns the store, but just showing that sort of generational thing, which you don't, again, you don't get a lot too much of these days. So, yeah, so Sesame is very special. And it's kind of become like sort of this icon, this national treasure, and we still need it. That's the thing, too. And probably always will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So, Noel, I think it's time we talk about it, my friend. Let's talk about the book, your memoir. Hey, this is really <laughs> fun. Where did the idea come from to write your story? Um. Well... Back in 2020, I don't know about you, but I had a lot of time on my hands at home. <laughs> so I thought, well, let me start like, right. It was also um, the idea of my wife, Susan Ely McNeil, also of the Maggie Hope Mysteries, available on Amazon, and her standalone novel, Mother Daughter Trader Spy, <laughs> coming out in paperback next month. And so it was her <laughs> idea of like, why don't you start writing these down? And so, and also because oh. like I'm getting older, and I was like, I don't want to start like forgetting a lot of these things. And so I just like started just writing down. And then each day, each morning, I would wake up and like think of something and just like just write it down. Until eventually, I realized I had like a whole chunk of my life down on 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 paper. And so it was also going to be in like a nice little way to give something to my son. Like, you know, mm. here it's like this is this is what your dad did for like the majority of his life. You know, he wiggled dolls. <laughs> and and so um yeah i decided to to do it and then i went, i did it myself like through amazon self-publishing like and so i did it and it's out there and it's available <laughs> and now what's nice too is that um i'm doing uh about to do comic cons again because that was the thing that really just like bit into like fun thanks to the pandemic, was doing Comic-Cons and going out and meeting people and seeing the cosplayers. Cosplayers are amazing. Like mm -hmm. some of the stuff they pull together is like absolutely amazing. And so I'm, I'm doing Comic-Cons, so I, then I'll get to also like promote my book. I'm doing Comic-Cons here and fingers crossed, like the guy who I work with, Tim Bending of In-Person Productions, who books the Comic-Cons for me. And fingers crossed, he's working on one possibly in the UK for this year so yes, <laughs> <Hey>. yes. <laughs> so hey kids if you're listening <laughs> contact your local <laughs> comic-con in england and ireland and say hey we want the bear guy we want the bear guy the bear guy <laughs> i mean the bear guy. When, yeah Wait, everyone knows the bear guy don't you, <laughs> you know the bear guy <laughs> That would be the that would be the sequel series, The Bear in the Big Blue House. The Bear Guy. <laughs> hey kids, it's time for the Bear Guy. It's a I bear just... guy that lives down the road. <laughs> exactly. It's like, it's like, uh, <laughs> I, I can imagine that just... bear guy. <laughs> it's just everybody asking who the, you know the bear guy. You know who the bear guy yeah, is. This is the whole episode. Yeah. The bear guy. Oh, you know. Guy. You know him. The bear guy. That's it. Right. The entire series, the entire episode, you reference it, but you never actually see the bear guy. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's always wait. It's kind of like waiting for Godot. Like he's going to be here any minute. <laughs> you know that bear guy. And other things happen. Shenanigans ensue. And by the end of the credits rolls, it's like he never shows up. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, oh like... maybe next time. <laughs> Or your nose appears at the side of the screen and it just cuts to black. <laughs> I know. It just like walks in and it's like, cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the door opens and like, cut. <laughs> oh, so good. Um, where, did you come up with the where did you come up with the title for it? I, I, I'm guessing it's going to be Kids TV, but I'm still just curious as to why you went with, hey, it's, this is really fun. It's specifically from Bear, from the goodbye song, because the first line that Bear sings is, hey, this it's was really fun. fun. Yeah. How did I not put that together sooner? I feel really stupid. <laughs> <that. I'm> not... <laughs> yeah, that was it. So I was like, so I I borrowed from Peter Lurie's incredible song. Like it's like 
one of the most beautiful, saddest kid songs ever written. <laughs> but so catchy. Um, it is. I, I imagine, though, there's so much to your career you've probably forgotten. So how did you go about getting all the information for the book? Have you just got, like, this incredible memory or have you, like, kept journals or whatever it may be? I was like, I just, like, started remembering stuff I did and then I would, like, tell friends and they would like add to it like oh but yeah and we also did this i was like oh yeah you're right we did do that or to say to my my wife is like are you gonna tell about this and i was like oh yeah i should tell about that and just like because <laughs> again like starting to forget like things it's just like well yeah we did do that didn't we and so i would just like put it down and even at the end i kind of tease that there are a lot more stories because as the books come out people have told me more things so it's like i've teased in the book like who knows maybe this is volume one and like maybe there'll be more stories <laughs> it's like let me know again i can blather for days <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with that my friend but, but how long did it take to write it um i leisurely like about like uh like, like 10 months almost a year just like off and on just leisurely doing it and then pulling it together and then i just like kept editing to the point where like okay you just need to turn it in this is like you could edit forever <laughs> So, so I just like turned it in. So yeah, so about it was about like a year of just like leisurely doing it. That's gonna, and, that's uh, kind of... It was fun actually. That's the other thing. It was fun. I can, I can imagine though, like you were just saying there of editing, it must have been a bit of a nightmare to edit down because you got to try and not make this war and peace. But you've got so many stories from like forty, <laughs> literally forties on Sesame Street, let alone anything else. So you know yeah. the amount of stories you could put in there yeah it's just like i was really i really was picking and choosing like what to put in what to leave out uh my really good friend who's in the book like one of my best friends jim krupa who's a puppeteer i met him in college and we've done shows together and jim always had an idea for his memoir where it would be like one side would have like all like the fun good stories but then you'd flip it over and then you'd get the dark versions of the same stories of what really happened. <laughs> Which I said, Jim, that is actually brilliant. No one's ever done that. <laughs> so is your choice to read like the good stories or the real story? <laughs> so, the showbiz story or the reality yeah. story? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I, I told him, that's actually really clever. No one's ever done that. That'd be really good. really good idea. I like that. Yeah, a really good idea. So yeah, so it was like it was it was it was really fun like writing this. And again, just like editing it down, just like wondering what to put in, what to take out, um, trimming, trimming some stuff, trying to have some sort of like flow to this and not like meander. So I kind of broke it up into four parts. So like the first part is pretty much like my childhood. And how I grew up and like, who is this guy? And then it goes into my early days from college into Sesame and then into other shows and movies. And and then I also, and then just before I turned it in, that's when I started doing um, Little Shop. And so I wanted to do a chapter about doing theater. And then uh, because of my directing of Sesame, I wanted to mention that. So I put that in. So it was editing that. <laughs> As, as well so it's like so i pretty much had to turn it in before anything else happened otherwise, otherwise I'm gonna turn it in. <laughs> something else would come along and just like wait i've got this so there'll be like another version like you know like updated version <laughs> it's probably a good job you sell you publish. you're the publisher be like come on no we get like, it you've on. got lots of stories Can come we? on a deadline. Actually, that's what was happening. The guy I was working was like like are you ready now <laughs> can we do this now <laughs> Please. Plus, I also, also all the people who were so generous to help uh, support and contribute to this project on Indiegogo. First of all, thank you. And second of all, yes, your autograph copy is coming because being Amazon, they only make a certain number that can I can order at a time. <laughs> so <laughs> they come in, I autograph them, and then I ship them out. So, <laughs> so there's another batch coming in, and there'll be another batch going out very soon. So hang tight. <laughs> I... I, sorry, James. It's just one thing I want to get in really quick. Like, I love the style in which you've written it in. Um, there's parts we've gone, if you want to see this, YouTube this, and I'll wait. And then you've written like hums and whistles. It's like got your personality in there, which I absolutely love. 
Um, and like, your, yeah, and I say, your, and your back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's carry on. <laughs> okay. My, one of my favorite parts was a title you had, which was uh, "You Never Forget Your First Time," and it started with "No, I'm not talking about that. Get your mind out the gutter." <laughs> <laughs> yes. Genius. Just genius. <laughs> I love that you just put all your personality into it as well. So, like, I found myself when I was reading, like, I couldn't put it down, it basically, because oh, I was so man. fascinated. And so, no, I'm being genuine, not because you're just here. It's genuinely, like, when I was reading, I was like, I can't put this down because I'm just intrigued. In that, like, it, I think since I put this style you've written it in, just, like I said, full of personality, it's just so hard to be like, do you know what? I'll say this for later. It's like, no, I wonder what happens next. So what happened then? What was going on here? <laughs> What's nice is people have asked me, and so what I'm going to uh, start working on is the audio version, which I want to oh. have out this summer. So then you can actually hear me blather these stories out and and talk about this stuff. <laughs> and also, and also, um, not only because people actually want to hear my voice, I I do like audio books of memoirs. Like they're really <laughs> good. Like like I really enjoyed Trevor Noah's like Born a Crime. Actually, having him read his story which was great because there were so many passages and phrases um with south african uh accents and pronunciations that i could never do but to hear him actually do it and it was very personable too actually having him talk so i want to do that too and also i have uh friends and uh, fans who uh turning pages is rather physically challenging for them so they have an audio book would also be beneficial for them so that's also the benefit of audiobooks too, in case you didn't realize. Like there are some people who physically just can't turn a page or hold a book, but audiobooks are great. It's a great idea. Like I said, I, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan and I listen to his autobiography on an audiobook. And it just gives it that extra little layer to it. And with Kevin Smith as well, he's reading the book and then he's just adding extra stories as he's going along because the guy just can't stop talking. So I'm like, oh, it's like bonus <laughs> chapters. I like this. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait a minute. Sidebar. Here's an audio sidebar. So, <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. That's actually a good idea. I was just like, <laughs> what note is? Like, by the way, it's great. have a little like a little audio effect, like ping. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Here's a little side note about what I just yeah. when you hear this sound, it means Noel's had an epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> now back to our audiobook. <laughs> so for those unaware, I don't know if Noel mentioned it once or twice in this interview, but his wife is also an author. Um Yes. In case and, you didn't realize. In case yes. you didn't realize. Um, see, I did put the plug in there, but you beat me to it. And it, how yes, much exactly. advice and guidance did she give you oh. during this process? Oh, he's gone. He's gone to get a book, hasn't he? <laughs> okay i'm back sorry <laughs> go you'll edit that part out okay go I, I, I was just saying like with your wife being an author how much advice and guidance did she give you during the process of doing the book um it's it's like she's always like been encouraging i always say that you know you married a guy who would run around in a bear suit if that's not love then nothing <laughs> is so that's like true devotion right there. So she's always been encouraging all of my career, my endeavors. It was like her idea. My other two books, 10 Minute Puppets and Box, that was her idea. And it's, it's my uh, uh, craft books of like how to do, like how to make a puppet in 10 minutes and what to do with cardboard that comes into your home. Um, but she said like early on, she said, make it for people like me, people who are not crafty. I am not Martha Stewart. <laughs> so... <laughs> When I would do 10 minute puppets, I would like do instructions and all that. And she would take it, look at it and just like cross that out, cross that out, cross that out, cross, and then hand it back. So it got to the point where I would like show it to her. She wouldn't even touch it. She would just look at it and just say simpler. Just like, <laughs> and I would go back and like cut some things out and I would just show it to her. She's like simpler. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah, so it was like, she's like, um, she, she's really great at like character development. So it was like basically think of, you know, yourself as like, you know, a character that you're reading, except it happens to be all true because, you know, that's why in terms of like the structure and also I edit her stuff too. Like she's currently writing Maggie Hope number 11 in her series. And uh, so I will edit stuff 
for her. And so I, I keep in mind like how she has the plot um, flow and it's like an act one and act two and an act three. And so I was trying to keep that in mind for this, like an act one, act two, even though there's four parts, like act one, act two, act three, and like wrapping it up. So yes, he's been like very, very supportive. That's amazing. So what feedback have you had on the book so far? I know Tom's just given a gleaming review of what he's read so far, but <laughs> what other feedback have so you had? So far only two reviews. It's like, if people like it, please go on Amazon and just like add your review to it because they, they notice stuff like this. So I'm, people have, I've gotten feedback saying people like love the book. They just love reading it, love finding out more about me. Um, stories that um, like one of my best friends, he had no idea about like, no, uh, the guy I knew in uh, in high school, um, and the, the tragic end of that. He, uh, somebody else on Twitter said, uh, "I just read p page ninety eight, and I want to give Noel a hug <laughs> because that was an encounter of something I saw in South Africa in Soweto." <laughs> so it's just like so people are reading it and they are enjoying it. So uh, so yeah, so I'm I'm glad people are actually enjoying it too, and I wanted to come out in time for like, you know, not only Bear's anniversary, the 25th anniversary of Bear, but the fact that it's finally back on the air and on Disney Plus, which is great. So. Oh, no, you just segued into my next part so beautifully. That was amazing. <laughs> the flow. <laughs> um, I just want to jump in really quickly because I've still got book questions I want to ask. Oh. Sorry, Jamie. No, no, no. Um, well, you were saying that people wanted to give you a hug when they read page 98. When I read, I found your mum and your grandmother inspiring. And I thought it was incredible how they always had your back and they always had you no matter what. And then when you wrote the story about your grandmother, um, when she passed away, when you were there, I actually cried for you. I actually got really, I, I found myself being like, oh my God, like I, I like the emotion hit me quite hard. It was really like in a really odd way, because obviously I didn't know your grandmother. But the way right. you've written it, it was just so beautiful. And I love that the fact that your mum was just so supportive. It's like, I think you mentioned in the previous interview we did when it was like, you want to be a puppeteer. She's like, cool. So what do we need to do? Yeah. You know, so yeah, what do we need to do? Is. Like, that's all she kept saying. Yeah. Like, so what do we need to do? Like, I just found that. I, I just think that they're just heroes. from Just from reading the book, they're just both absolute heroes. Yeah. They, they, I've, I've lucked out by having two very strong Black women, like, raise me. And so, and the fact that they were so supportive and my mom in particular, who always said like, don't get a job. You can always get a job, get a career. And so she was very supportive and let's face it, reap the rewards of that with the many little trips I did as, as Bear and coming onto sets and enjoying craft service. So, <laughs> so it worked out for her benefit too. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that. But obviously you just mentioned it then. You know, Bear is back. Disney has finally fought Source Sense and brought Bear onto our screens and uploaded it all to Disney Plus. How happy were you when this happened? Well, it was like it was like, first of all, it's like for years, I mean years, people on social media have said like like they should put Bear on 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 Disney. It's like you should tell them to put Bear on Disney. Can you put Bear back on Disney, as if somehow I had control over this. <laughs> a couple of times I answered, if it was up to me, it never would have gone off the air. So the what? fact that you, I have this power is adorable, but I don't. I have squat in the decision-making. And so that's why I was, it was actually on my birthday last September and I was taking a walk through the park and I got this notification on Twitter and somebody saying, no, congratulations on Bear. And I was like, immediately, you know, like, you know, what? <laughs> and I just like looked and it was just like, you know, Bear's coming on Disney Plus, like, no, October, you know, like, like um, 19th. Or, and it was just like, nah. I was like, so I, so I, I Googled and just like checked another site, like, mm, okay, let me check one more. <laughs> So I check. I checked like I checked like four different sites, and uh, I was just like, okay, this actually seems legitimate. <laughs> and so that's when I just said, like, okay, I guess it's actually happening. And so that's when I went on on uh, TikTok. I did this quick little like it was like ten seconds. It's just like 
know, guess what's finally coming on Disney Plus? And it had a little bear theme underscoring underneath. And it just like went like viral. It was insane. People just went nuts over it. It's it was it was it was incredible. And I just kept building up to the fact that, yep, it's like coming, it's coming. And it was officially announced, like, yep, it's coming. It's it's coming out. And and then when it came out, apparently there's for some reason, there's like seven episodes that aren't included. So now I'm getting, you know, it's like it's like you should tell them to put the, the seven episodes on. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do that. Let me write that down. Thanks I'll send, for reminding me. I'll send an email to the mouse. I know him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yo, Bobby Iger, Noel here. Listen. <laughs> Could you do me a favor? <laughs> Just throw on those seven, would you? <laughs> yeah, like, you know. <laughs> What's the hold up? <laughs> exactly. Don't you know who yeah. I am? Star Twinkle ten forty seven on Twitter really wants these seven on. Would you mind? <laughs> Could you be a pal? They'd really appreciate it. Love you. Mean it. I love that you um, did a book signing and you had a puppet of bear on your hand when you were there in, yeah. in New York. So yeah, that was absolutely amazing as well. Because for a brief second, I was like, I thought the suit was gone, and then I realized it was a hand puppet. So. <laughs> I thought Bear was bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like he bigger. Did he have How legs? Did he get in? <laughs> Wait a minute. It's like, yes. Yes, it's a lie, kids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like that that's it's a puppet of a puppet, which first of all it was very meta, a puppet of a puppet. But uh it was a puppet built by my uh my dear friend James Voitall Jr., who was one of the people who built the original bear. He built one of the bear heads for the TV show. And it oh. came about because our friend, another dear friend, Paul McGinnis was marrying uh, and is married to Haley uh, Jenkins. And for the reception, uh, Paul asked, could me and Peter Lentz and Tyler Bunch, who were Pip and Pop on there, could we sing Otter Love for the reception? Because Haley was one of the puppeteers when the Bear Show was at the Disney MGM Studios in um, Orlando at Walt Disney World. And that was her favorite song. And I thought, yeah, we could absolutely do that. And I thought, well, you know, it's kind of weird for three guys to be standing up there in suits doing these little voices. Let's make it more entertaining. So I thought puppets, let's do it with puppets. So I made a pip and pop puppets for Peter and Tyler. Then I thought, okay, I'll make a puppet of bear for me. How do I do this? So I got the fur and it got delivered. And then when it came, I just started texting James like, for half an hour, like, what should I do first? What should I do first? Okay, so when I do this, what do I do next? To the point where James said, no, just send me the fur. It'll be a lot easier. <laughs> and I did, I sent him the whole thing. And then the morning of the wedding at the I, my the hotel, I got a knock on my door and James came in with this big black laundry bag and I opened it up and it's the most gorgeous thing. I never could have done this in a billion years, never. It's like he went above and beyond because James will, it's like, it doesn't matter. It's like, it doesn't matter like how much he's getting paid for something. He'll always do more because he has to like, look at it. He has to say, yes, I made that. And he did this for free. And it's just the oh. most gorgeous thing I've Amazing. ever seen. And it just like helps the like that whole spirit of bear uh, going, which a lot of people have, have credited me apparently for like keeping Bear alive until it finally got out on Disney Plus um, with the TikTok. Again, during the pandemic, like my son said, nope. I said, yeah, you should go on TikTok. Like, what's a TikTok? And then after like, you know, a patronizing 30 second explanation only a teenager can do, he said, you should use a bear puppet. Like, why? Well, millennials, millennials love bear. I was like, so I did. And then I just like started doing these things uh, to the point where like early on during the pandemic about washing your hands for 20 seconds and singing a song so bear and i did a little video which got the attention of bbc world news <laughs> and i got interviewed on bbc world news with bear <laughs> amazing <laughs> yes ironically the the presenter who interviewed me she had no idea who bear was because <laughs> she never grew up in the show <laughs> oh. she never saw oh. everybody else in the studio knew it and had to explain who this was <laughs> she was like Oh, okay, okay, charming. It, so, it's like <laughs> it's nuts. Of all of all the news stations, of all the places in the entire world that could have picked that up, 
it was BBC World. Like, yes, right? it could have <laughs> yeah. been anyone. Yeah, Nuts. it's like it's like really. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was up and like you know, you know, we were chatting at like seven a.m. my time. <laughs> oh. BBC World News, yeah, it was great. But yeah, it's like and because of him, I've um, I've gotten to do like um stuff on TikTok, which people have enjoyed. I'm on Cameo, and so I do little requests for people for birthdays and anniversaries. Now coming up Mother's Day, there, and I used to do with birthdays used to be people and still is people who grew up with Bear. And now I'm also doing cameos for people who grew up with Bear whose children are now watching Bear. Yes. And so kids who are turning like 18 months or one or two and could Bear say you know, hi to them. So it's like whole new generation, which is really gratifying too. I was gonna say I can only imagine these people that loved it and now showing it to their kids because I did I did it I showed my daughter as soon as it came on I was like the day it came out I was like come on Olivia I'm gonna teach you all about Bear and his big blue house <laughs> I can't get her past episode two I think it is because she loves episode one so much so I can watch Bear and just watch his episode one again she absolutely <laughs> loves that first episode I don't know what you I can't get to her. Explain it. you know there's more episodes yeah, you know, she's like episodes. I want to watch the Shadow Song I'm like there's more Shadow Songs <laughs> let me. Let's get this further. Shadow, actually, sings a different song. Yeah, she has her own song. It's called Shadows Lullaby. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Tara Mooney has a gorgeous voice. It was my <laughs> suggestion. We need Tara's voice. There's a whole show about nighttime, and Tara sings the song. <laughs> like, I've even put the next episode on. She takes a remote off me, and she's like, "No, first one." <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it is cute when she's like starts sniffing up to the screen. Like, oh, it's you! I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, get her eventually. I'll get her past that first episode eventually. So we'll. <laughs> people, people have shown me clips of their kids like watching the first episode. It, it's so funny because I can't watch the first episode because for me it's just like, no, I got so much better. No, no, not the first episode. No, no, no. Skip to season three. It's like <laughs> it's so much better. It's like, don't look at the first episode. I can't That's look it. at it. And I'll see the scene of him doing it. It's like, I'm like, oh, no. It's like, no, no. It's just, ah. <laughs> That's all I've got to do now. I'll just turn around to tomorrow and go, we have to watch past season one because Bear told me to tell you he gets exactly. better. <laughs> it, it gets better. <laughs> it gets so much better. Trust me. There are other characters. <laughs> have you watched any of it back since it's been on disney plus at all actually on a uh, christmas eve we uh we watched um the first part of uh the, the christmas episode the christmas eve episode of bear it was actually two part it was christmas eve and then when it originally aired the next day was christmas day and so it was part two the christmas day one one of the seven by the way that's not aired as i was clearly told by many people <laughs> and why i should have it put on <laughs> But we watched we watched the, the Christmas Eve episode because I realized my son had never seen it. And so and I hadn't seen it in Eon, so we all watched it. And it was like it still holds up. It's still like a really sweet, funny episode. And uh and, and um and it's a really, really beautiful uh message too. So because we ta- we actually addressed the concept of uh un- homelessness, being unhoused with dog, Jack the dog who they find who doesn't have a home. And so they invite him in for uh, for Christmas. So the next day he actually does get a home, but see, we don't know that yet because they haven't put the show on. <laughs> so <laughs> what that's happens all these, Well, That's all those people on Twitter. Like, what happened to Jack? No, I need to know. Get it on Disney Plus. What happened to Jack? <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> it's like, not up to me, man. <laughs> I wonder why this, those seven episodes didn't get put on. That's really weird. I, I, I don't know. It's like, I mean, the, the fact that one of the reasons why it took this long was because they had to upgrade, upgrade, that's good, no, that's before the breaking, <laughs> upgrade the uh, the quality of the show. Like visually, they had to upgrade it to like 4K and then also audibly, they had to like upgrade mm. the audio. And then of course, they had to upgrade the audio for all the translations well, because Bear is seen worldwide again on a Disney Plus. Cool. So that was one of the reasons why it, it, it took this long. So maybe they're doing the same thing with the other seven. Who knows? <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully they'll get back on there. It's so yeah, odd why, why, they, why they do that. Hopefully it's not because, oh, there's, there's, a word, there's some content in there that we can't have out for this reason. You know, people no. seem to do actually, these was, days. Actually, actually, it's funny. When we did, we did the, the, uh, 
one of the best selling like DVDs of Bear on Amazon was the potty episode, teaching of all about potty training. And I remember for Bear's dialogue, he always introduces the, the concept of the show. And I had to do one section twice because for the US, we would, you know, once you outgo your diapers, then you go into underwear. But then I had to redo it for you guys and say, once you outgrow your nappies, then yes. you go into underwear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like one of those little one of those little things I had to be like <laughs> dumped in. It was like, <laughs> yes. I think it, I think it just looped it actually. Maybe it's just like because diapers and nappies have the same like lip flap. So yeah, nappies. <laughs> incredible so what's what's next to you mr mcneil do you have anything coming up that you're allowed to talk about uh, i was like well i'm not doing marvel so i can talk about a lot of things but uh, there you go, <laughs> that would be awesome <laughs> to do uh but i'm not actually um yeah i've got actually got um little shop coming up um this uh, weekend uh to do um i'm doing comic cons again i've got uh, one in July in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I've got one, um, actually two in September, one in uh, the first weekend in Orlando. And uh, then another one uh, just out of Jacksonville, the weekend of uh, my birthday again, the weekend of the 13th. Um, and then just like, just waiting for like this next episode of like next season of Sesame with more directing, um, waiting to hear back um because of um my other little well pet project is the show me show which is on youtube and it's the show i've been developing for kids with autism and special needs so i've been pitching that to someone so waiting to hear back fingers crossed <laughs> that'll that'll be a go and then just pretty much enjoying life and enjoying my family and uh yeah just pretty much yeah just appreciating each day so not really so much long term as just enjoying them now like you guys like this was really fun oh, that sounds like right. a song cue <laughs> hey this was really fun <laughs> and i want to touch i want to touch on something real quick so there was a recent episode of my favorite tv show ever last week tonight where you came out as mickey mouse yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we talk about oh, this oh yes <laughs> Your countryman, John Oliver. <laughs> oh, my cityman. <laughs> How was that like, pitched? It was like, well, it's like, first of all, John is one of like the nicest guys. He truly is and truly appreciates and respects puppetry and puppeteers and what I do. And so my goal is always to make John laugh during the, the rehearsal because he never sees it until I actually have whatever it is and we do it the first time. And the goal is to make him laugh. And so uh, they they came to me and just said, "No, we've got this coming up." And like we it's like and it's like, "Would you want to do it?" And I was like, "Sure." And I think they were concerned about my connection with Disney. Yeah. And saying 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 it's like, "Do you want your name on, or we could just not put your name on?" And I was like, "No, put my name on." It's like I'm fine. This is this is fine. <laughs> it's like it's, I'm totally cool. It's great. <laughs> And so, yeah, and so it was like, it was like really fun. Again, it was built by Monkey Boys, same guys who did Little Shop and also do this stuff for um, Saturday Night Live. And it was really funny. And John, and John's just like, it's kind of like this just naughty streak in him, just like, you know, to be sued yeah. by the Walt Disney Company, which is why they heard nothing that first week. So we're going to do it again next week. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to just poke a little it's harder crazy. this time <laughs> but no it's like no it's like they, they haven't done anything it's like pretty much just like even legal knows that i mean that's that's why they were able to do it because legal was like no they're not going to sue us it's fine it's like go ahead it was so, amazing. yeah but it was really but it was really it was really funny <laughs> so i i told john i was like so 10 years of being ridiculous mascots has all resulted in this moment hasn't it he said absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely phenomenal 
I just, I, I just love it. I just love it. I just think it was great. And obviously when you walked out and stuff, and I was like, this is one of the best things I've ever seen. And that's why I love this show so much because it, 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 it does like push us to how far can we go? How far can we push this? And, you know, until someone reacts and then it's like, when Norma acts like, okay, you don't want to, uh, we'll just push a little harder. We're just going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't see this last week? Well, let's do this again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, try a little harder this time <laughs> yeah it's like it's very it's and again he's like really nice he's really funny the whole staff is really good the, the show is incredibly smart well researched intelligent but i always i always describe it as uh 60 minutes meets monty python because it's it's very factual <laughs> and very informative and then you just have this bizarre twist to it all <laughs> oh absolutely great um the other thing I really want to ask, just go back to the book real quick. It's not your average size. It's almost no. <laughs> like textbooks. Why Why is it so big? I'm not complaining. I'm just curious. I was, yeah, I was thinking in terms of like, almost like, almost, almost like, almost like a storybook. Kind of like, like, big enough, ah. like kind of like a, a storybook and, and then the, the pictures inside. And then after it came out and I saw how good it turned out, I said, oh, you know what? I should have put puppets in here too. Because I was going to add like, <laughs> Pages you could tear out and like make a puppet out of because like like you know the puppet on the cover. So I should have done that. So maybe for like the next round. <laughs> but yeah, I thought I started with it as like a storybook and just like you just sit and just like read it. Also, I mean it's over two hundred pages like this. If it was any smaller, it would be real. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> so like a dictionary. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of like a textbook and it's kind of but like I think of it as a, like a storybook that you're just like sitting and reading and it's like a good. You know, you want to you want to hold a book. This is a book you can hold, <laughs> and it looks great none on that, a camera with that. None that <laughs> yeah, none that Kindle. I was like, you can't hold a Kindle like that. <laughs> this is very true. Incredible. Uh, last thing from myself, Noel. With all this time reflecting on your career and seeing the amazing projects you've worked on, I was looking on your Muppets Wiki page, and I was wondering, like, are there any characters or shows you've worked on that you would love people to check out? Who that you know, they probably aren't as well known as Bear and stuff like that. And why is it Arnold Schnuffle Up a Nigger? <laughs> I laughed yeah, for a like, solid five minutes when I saw that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like it's on YouTube. If you check it out, it's like Sesame Arnold Snuffle Up a Nigger, and it's like it was Snuffy's trainer. Well, you know, to try and get the kids to exercise. So I was like, yeah, his personal trainer. It's like Arnold Snuffle Up a Nigger, and it's like yes. <laughs> One shot. <laughs> that was it. We came on. Um, yeah, I've done like a lot of like somebody actually, I think it was was it Mumpy Wiki? They pulled together like not only the characters I've done, but like the cameos I've done on Sesame Street. And like as nice. a human being in the background. I, and some things I totally forgot. Like, oh yeah, that's right. I did do that. Like, like I was like a doctor in like two different <laughs> shows <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <laughs> with a clipboard and on the phone in the back it's like totally it's like would you trust this man with your prescription um <laughs> but yeah there's like other shows that i've worked on that you could see on like youtube like um there's like um the puzzle place which was this multicultural show that was here in the u.s so that's on and it's it's it still holds up if they somehow put it on the air again it would still hold up because it was talk, talking about all about tolerance and respect for each other and uh it, it was a great show it was really fun um and then there's uh eureka's castle which was on nickelodeon which is now on paramount plus the first season so you could catch that as well as like a couple episodes on uh on um youtube um and then i did uh i, I did the, this movie called ninja turtles 3 <laughs> so it got to be like the puppeteer for Raphael. And me and Matt Hale did that. And I mentioned that in the book too. So yeah, a lot of just like weird, I was an emergency vehicle. I don't know if you can hear that outside. But yes, I live yeah. in New York. So it's like, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> We're awake now. Um, yeah, and it's like, I've done like all kinds of like, there's like, oh yeah, it's like, it's referenced in the book. I think it's one of those things where, I don't know if I said, go check it out, but Night of a Hundred Stars Part Two. <laughs> <laughs> the height of 80s <laughs> and it's like <laughs> it's like we were in the, the Muppet bus and I think I was the Swedish chef 
not showing his hands for obvious reasons. So I was just holding him up and then uh, got to do that. And then like, the original like snuggle commercials and I was like a puppeteer for that. There's just like weird little like characters here and there that I've, that I've done. This is, oh, there's um, um, puppet regime where it's like these puppets that look like political figures like Joe Biden and um, Madeline Markle. And uh, and, and um, um, that, wait, the chancellor, wherever her name was, Myrtle, Myrtle, where is it? Merkel, Merkel, Merkel. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like, that's yeah, only a second. Like, that's that? yeah. I'm actually doing it. I'm actually doing this week again, and so puppeteering that. So you can see that puppet regime on YouTube, and it's pretty funny. So like all these weird little things that pop up every now and then that you know require me to like wiggle it. <laughs> <laughs> and then also on YouTube, like on the social impact things, it's like um, there's like the uh, um, Sesame Fire Truck, and there's like the Wheels on the Bus song, except I'm playing the part of the fire truck. And I directed this segment with Grover, Elmo, and Gabby. That was fun. And it was like three segments involving the Wheels on the Bus, but we changed the lyrics. So it's like the Wheels on the Fire Truck. And then there was like Animals on the Farm, but to the melody, Wheels on the Bus. And I'm all the animals. <laughs> <laughs> including like this composite shot where we had to like do separate passes and edit together because I'm all the animals. And then we actually did Wheels on the Bus where Grover's the bus driver and I'm the uh, the alligator in it. So it's like fun little weird stuff like that. Just <laughs> I love it. I love it. You've done so much though. It's in amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Mr. Stevens, do you have any more questions for our incredible guest? I don't have any more questions. I just want to say one more thing. I, I I find you insanely inspiring. I think reading through your book and everything like you know, it's just incredible the things that you've done, uh, the things that you're doing, um, and yeah, you've had one hell of a career, sir. And I I wish you all the best with the with with, with what, what what what's to come. There's so much more to come, and I really hope you do a second book. <laughs> Thank you. It was like it was like I remember um there was one of the great book that um, George Byrne wrote called All My Best Friends. And he talks about all the people he worked with in the show business for his like 90 years. So I was thinking maybe like a similar thing, like all the people I've worked with, all my friends and all the celebrities I've gotten to, to work with as well. Cause like, it's just like between the shows that I've done, just like runs the gamut of like the people that I've encountered and been very fortunate to, to, uh, to work with. And just like, I think, trying not to take it for granted, like really being appreciative. Like that day I directed Sesame the first day, um, it was um, my son's birthday. And so I had the puppets in my iPhone, wish my son like a happy birthday. Oh. And when I got home, uh, his girlfriend was over. And so I, I showed it to them. And my son is just like, he's smiling because he's like, oh, it's really cute. His girlfriend was like this, it's like, because her jaw was on the floor because she couldn't believe that Elmo and Rosita and the Count are all saying specifically, happy birthday <laughs> to my son. He was just like gobsmacked. She couldn't believe this. <laughs> and so I was like, and so seeing her react, I was like, oh yeah, this is why I do it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is why, yeah. So it's, it was awesome. It was great. And like, I really appreciate you guys like having me on hopefully maybe if i do this con in the uk you can come by oh yes yes please yes, oh, we yes. will definitely be there <laughs> we will definitely awesome. be there and again first round is on me whenever i see you guys over there so oh, oh yes kind, sir. I'm gonna hold you to that though don't <laughs> <laughs> Now, when you say first round, you say first round for Jamie and then another round for me, and then... Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a good gone. point, yeah. <laughs> exactly. First round for this side of the pub, and then second round for... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, this has been absolutely amazing. It's, it, thank you so much for coming back on, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Have a Have a great, like, rest of the, you know time in spring into summer it's like i don't know what plans you guys have but you know i'm looking forward to warmer weather now oh yeah <laughs> yes yeah, yes absolutely <laughs> and before you do get out of here though is there any plugs that you'd like any plugs at all that you want to people to go and check out at all any social media any websites um like well specifically the book which is on amazon 
So I was like, just you can go there That's and right. order it and, you know, order it, leave a review. If you read it, go back and leave a review and let me know like what you like and what you didn't like. You know, you know I'm up for constructive criticism. So it's just like, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm on Cameo. So if you'd like to have Bear or I, I send you a greeting, like check us out on Cameo. And, you know, I, I'm on the Instagram too. And as a, uh, at, uh, and McNeil and TikTok. I'm on the TikTok, as my, as I would say, I'm on the TikTok. So I occasionally <laughs> put on little videos there as well. So incredible, incredible. My friend, thank, thank you, man, for just, just for doing it, we, uh, just for being just a downright hero. And I'm going to back you, even though you told Jamie that you didn't get out enough. I'm backing him up at the start of this episode where he said that you're one of the nicest people ever because you are genuinely so <laughs> You are. Team. So you're getting tag teamed there now. Thank you, guys. So, this is awesome. <laughs> Thank I'm, you I'm so pleased you enjoyed. You too. Look after yourself and we'll see you soon. Take care, sir. See you later. Tell you what, that was really fun. Hey, I absolutely love this episode so damn much. Noel, you are an absolute hero and if you were listening to this, I need to give Noel his flowers, as they say. We spoke in this episode about how I can't get my daughter to watch past the first episode of Bear in the Big Blue House. And Noel, being the absolute hero he is, sent over a video of Bear telling her to watch more episodes. Hmm? Oh, Olivia, it is so good to see you. And you are just in time because I wanted to tell you... I haven't convinced her yet, but we're working on it. But she absolutely loved that video so much. She was like, oh, Daddy, it's Bear. And then she's like, he's talking to me. So like, she absolutely loved it. It was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Noel. That meant the world. Yeah, no, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule, um, being on Broadway currently and whatnot with uh, by coming on our show again. Uh, it meant the world to us to get to catch up, uh, get to chat. And just talk all things puppets. It was great. And memoirs, of course. Um, and so thank you so much. We really hope that you all enjoyed listening to it as much as we really did recording it.